Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 144. Happy Thursday. If you guys are listening to today's episode on Thursday, I hope your day is going incredible. I hope your week is going incredible. I hope your summer is going incredible. And I really hope that you are just doing well. Today's episode is kind of an emotion based one stepping away a little bit today from talking about goals as that is what we chatted about on Tuesday we talked about 10 reasons why people do not set or achieve their goals and so as much as I am someone who loves peak performance I love goals I also like to live my life from a trauma-informed lens and from an understanding of how our emotions our experiences and just way of life can really interrupt the bigger picture sometimes because if we are not doing well at the center and if we are struggling thinking outside of a day-to-day basis feels nearly impossible and so I want to come into today's episode and give you guys permission to just pause and to just be here And I hope that by the end of today's episode, you guys feel a little bit more validated, understood, but also have a little bit of momentum to get back on track. And so today's episode is called, Are You Needing a Reset? Are You Needing to Reset? This is something that is very near and dear to my heart right now. If you can even hear in my voice, it is exhausted. I am veering burnout, if not have already surpassed burnout. And I'm not going to lie, I've been struggling a little bit with keeping up with everything. And although so many things, if not most things in my life right now are very in alignment, I'm tired and it's catching up to me. And so this was something that I had to give to myself. And I knew that I wanted to record today's episode from this headspace because I'm feeling it right now and I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. So much of life is spent in comparison and we can feel really alone and isolated because we compare to what we see from an outside perspective without holding that understanding and compassion for ourselves that we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We don't know what people's lives are like outside of what you see in public and on social media. And so I think a lot of people could look at my life and be like, wow, like you got it all figured out. You're so in alignment. You're doing so great, which is awesome and amazing. And I'm so grateful for that. But at the core, mental illness will always affect my life. Mental health is something that is forever going to be a battle of mine. And although now I have really good tips and tricks and supports and all the things to be proactive in it, sometimes it just gets to you. And sometimes it affects you. And it's not even a direct thing that can impact it. Sometimes it's just life. And so I wanted to come on here from this headspace with a full heart and ask you guys some powerful questions and also give you 10 different ways that you can begin to shift your life if you're just at a place of needing to reset. And so I wanted to open today's episode with a question. And I've been doing this a lot lately because... I want you to be able to think for yourself. I think a lot of times when I listen to podcasts, it can be 
really easy to just stay with whoever is speaking because you're coming at it from their story and their experience. I want to come at this from my story and from my experiences, but also I want you guys to leave with self-awareness for yourself, with being able to reflect for yourself, because at the end of the day, that is what's going to impact your life. And so the question that I would love to ask you to start us off today is zero to 10. I want you to assess for yourself. Where would you gauge yourself in terms of holistically fulfilled? Oftentimes we will have an instinctive number that comes up when we're asked these questions and then we start to overthink it. I want you to just be honest with yourself. Zero to 10, how fulfilled are you in life right now? It doesn't matter what the answer is. All this is is just gauging where you're at because until you can gauge where you're at, you can't really take action. And so once you have that number, I want you to hold it in your consciousness and I want you to validate that for yourself. The reason that it's important for me to ask that question again is because when we are the most fulfilled in our life, that is often a sign that we are in alignment. And depending when you listen to today's episode, because the interesting thing about everything I'm talking about today is life seems to be ebbing and flowing as far as how you feel on a day-to-day basis. Meaning one day can be really great and then the next day seems like it's crap. And I feel like so many people I've been talking to lately express that they feel like they're riding a roller coaster. A lot of my clients express this truth as well of like, I'm doing really, really great today. And then we'll talk a couple days later and it's like, today's been shit. And it's like, yes, we're humans. We're going to feel all the emotions. We're supposed to ebb and flow and feel all the things. But I can't help but think that so much of this flip-flopping is because A, our window of tolerance has become so small that we're just in these reactive states on autopilot. But I think another huge component of it is because a lot of us are living out of alignment. It's hard to be a fulfilled, happy, grateful, ambitious, head-centered, heart-centered person if you're not fulfilled in your life and you're not in alignment. And so that's why I wanted to start today's episode from that lens. When we're in alignment, we often feel good, we feel calm, we feel at ease, we feel at rest. And there's times in our life where we don't feel like that and we often just keep going, right? That's why today's episode is called, Are You Needing a Reset? Because it's really easy for us to use negative momentum and it exponentially seems to to speed up, right? When we have a really good day, it's harder to duplicate that sometimes. But when we have a bad day, it's really easy to pour that into tomorrow and then into tomorrow and then weeks go by, months go by and we're like, I'm really not happy. I'm really struggling. And so I want today to be like a halt time to stop and see if we can shift some things to realign your life. I've gotten really good at this for myself, but it has only happened through conscious effort, through reps and through trying to be as proactive as possible but I know what it's like to sit in that state and to contemplate for a long time and to feel like you're struggling for a long time and that it can't get better and nothing's gonna shift. And if this isn't resonating, I encourage you to put this in your back pocket for maybe a time and a day that it is. Because if you're listening to today's episode and you're in a really, really good headspace, you might be like, meh, no, I don't need that. And that's what we do, right? And then we get into those states and it's like, oh gosh, I don't have the tips, the resources, the tools to support me in this. And so these are things that you can really use at any time to begin to shift your life. And so again, I wrote down here, I'm just reading through here. Today's episode surfaced because I had to ask myself and recenter myself lately. And the interesting thing about my life is there's been nothing really in specific that has shifted. I think it's been just an accumulation of a lot of new things in my life. I'm taking on a lot of new clients. I have new people coming into my life. It's summer, which means it's a different season, which means you're often doing more things, staying up later. And so it can just be really easy and very quick to step out of alignment and not even step out of alignment, step out of routine, I think is a big thing too. And so you need to be able to assess for yourself, is this something that is just like a phase, is just a season, or do I actually holistically feel like maybe my life is not that in alignment? and knowing that it's okay to shift and to pivot that at any time. 
I want to go through 10 different things with you guys of how you can begin to shift your life and reset yourself. And I'm not saying this episode is not about changing things in your life. This is just about a mental reset that you might be needing to get yourself back on track and to gain momentum again. Maybe you've been gaining momentum down a different track than you want to. And I want you to know that it's never too late to pause and to pivot, to pause and to realign. It would be so naive to think that we will forever stay perfectly in alignment. There are always going to be factors outside of ourselves that are going to influence our life. There's going to be people that are going to influence our life, circumstances, finances, whatever it is, environmental things that shift our life for us sometimes, whether we like it or not. But I want us to focus on the things that are in our control that we can begin to shift. But as I was saying, it's never too late to shift and pivot. And in fact, knowing that this is constantly going to be something that is going to surface in your life. As we continue to grow, we get older, we evolve, we have new experiences, we constantly have to recenter ourselves. We have to make sure that we're staying in alignment because it can be really, really easy to off stray ourselves and then get to a place where we're like, wow, I'm really unhappy and I need to shift. And so depending where you're at with this, I hope that today's episode lands. Doesn't really matter the severity. Maybe you are super in alignment and you're really going to need to harness yourself back. Or maybe you're just like me and you have kind of stepped outside a little bit and it's time to come back in and it's a bit of a quicker fix. And so nonetheless, wherever you are right now, I want you to just assess for yourself where you are, how this is resonating. So I kind of wrote down a feeling that I, so I went to a concert this weekend and it kind of reminded me of any time I go on vacation, even though it was only one night, whenever I go on vacation and I come back home, There's like this deep urge within me to just completely transform my life. I want to purge everything. I want to clean. I want to reset. I'm ready for a new routine. And so if you know that feeling, you know what I'm talking about, where you leave your home for X amount of time. And then when you come back, you're like, all right, it's time to get my shit together. That is exactly the feeling that I want you to feel coming off of today's episode. Like you just got back from vacation and it's ready to realign your life. It's time to reset your life. And so let's dive into some of these 10 things that I wrote down and just see how you can begin to give yourself that permission to reset your life. So the first thing that I encourage you guys to do, and if you know me, you probably know that this was going to be one on there, and that's to find some damn gratitude. Gratitude, I hate that so many things become so mainstream talked about that we lose touch with its significance. And I think because finding gratitude was pushed around so much, it's almost become desensitized of how impactful it actually is for us. The thing is, is our brain is designed to be pretty much 85% negative. And so if we're not consciously trying to find the good, Our brain is not wired in a way to do that. And in fact, for every one positive experience or negative experience we have, it takes 19 positive experiences to counter that. That is insane. That is a 19 to 1 ratio of how much our brain is just naturally wired to focus on the negative. I know exactly what it's like to not know where to turn, to feel alone, helpless, and stuck. My goal as a coach is to help clients from a trauma-informed perspective see your worth and develop self-belief so you may chase your dreams and trust your intuition to live the most aligned, fulfilling life possible. If you're looking to elevate your life to the next level but aren't sure where to start, I would absolutely love to connect. If you're feeling pulled or curious, please use the link in the show notes below to book your free call. I look forward to connecting and supporting you on your own unique journey. And so the reason I always start from this lens is because it works. It works. And it can feel icky and weird sometimes, but we all have things to be grateful for. You can be in the darkest, deepest, hardest place in your life, and there is still something to be grateful for. You just have to look for it. Even the fact that you're alive and conscious of that is a blessing and something to be grateful for. Sometimes when I'm needing a reset, it's because I've lost sight 
of all the amazing things in my life. Often when we feel like we need that reset, it's because we've hyper-focused so much on all the things that are going wrong, all of our stressors. It's like we're playing catch up and we can't seem to, to catch up to anything. And so when we're able to just pause, take a second, look around, look up, and find something to be grateful for, it slows you down. It gets you out of your head. It brings you to the present moment. I encourage you right now to just look around wherever you are, if you are driving, if you are home, if you are at the gym, wherever you are, and I want you to just consciously tell yourself something you're grateful for. A further thing that you can do, which makes me so happy, is telling other people something you're grateful for about them. Funny enough, speaking of the concert, I told myself I wanted to make 10 people's day that day. I wanted to consciously go up to 10 people and say something that I think is cool about them. Even though it's a stranger, it doesn't matter. Complimenting them on something cool, telling them something kind. I hope you have a great day. Making eye contact, smiling. You guys, it is contagious. There's this one girl that I seen at the concert and I told her that I loved her dress. And you could see her resistance to take that compliment. And her husband goes, I've been trying to tell her she looks beautiful all day. It's like you were meant to tell us that. A part of me almost feels emotional talking about that because I'm like, how many of us are just needing that little ounce of extra love? It is making me emotional to talk about this because kindness and gratitude is such an easy thing to give and it's free to give, yet I think so many of us are struggling so much in our own heads that we have a hard time vocalizing that to other people. And so I just think that by being intentional about it and knowing that it makes a difference is just such a beautiful thing. And I know it can be hard, you guys, talking to strangers. I know it can be scary, but it's also one of the best feelings in the whole wide world and such a cup-filling feeling to give, but also to receive. Think of a time someone's told you something kind, especially a stranger, for some reason just hits so much different. And you just feel good. You're like wow, people are good and it just brings you back to your body and it amplifies this energy within you to then ripple that to somebody else. And so that is the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys is when you're needing a reset, how can you lean into what you already have, what you're grateful for? Because when we need a reset, it can be really easy to focus on all the things that we need to shift and we need to improve and we need to do and what needs action But what if you just take a second to validate all that is first and then take action from a wholesome, heart-centered headspace? So that one made me a little emotional to talk about. Again, today we're coming in here raw. We are coming on here vulnerable and pouring from the heart. So stick with me. I'm happy that you're here. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to take a step back and reflect by yourself. Take time for yourself. It is so important that we do things by ourselves, we reflect by ourselves, and we get to know ourselves. It is so easy to continue to surround ourselves with people, to keep ourselves busy, because when we're left alone and we're left with our thoughts, that's when we have to think, that's when we have to process. And often when we do that, you know, we want to cope, we want to cover it up, we want to escape it. But what if that's exactly what you're needing? Is just some intentional time with you. I know that this one can be really hard if you've never done it before. I remember the first time that I moved out by myself, I was like, I can't do this. This is too much. But then slowly, each and every day, I poured a little bit more into myself, get to know myself a little bit more. And then it's a continuous journey for the rest of your life. But knowing that you are only promised you for the rest of your life. There is no relationship that is more important than your relationship with yourself. Yet so many of us, one of the most toxic relationships we have is with our own soul and body that we live in. I understand the reasons in which that is. However, I also understand and know so deeply the beauty that comes from getting to know yourself and falling in love with yourself. So that is the second thing that I would encourage you to do if you're feeling like you're needing a reset is 
take some time with just you. It might bring up anxiety. It might bring up discomfort. I encourage you to sit through that. Sometimes the best things in life, in fact, most of the time, the best things in life aren't easy. They come through discomfort. They come through pain. But I can pretty much guarantee you're going to thank yourself more for doing it, for showing up for yourself, than 50 years down the road wishing that you had spent more intentional time getting to know you for you. This brings me into number three, reflecting and getting to know your values. There's a reason so many of us feel disconnected from ourselves and from others around us because if you don't know what you value in life, you don't really know what to properly surround yourself with, what to invest your time in, what to do with your life. One of the best practices I ever did was getting to know my values and not judging them. And knowing that it is then my job and my responsibility to ensure that the people in my life are a good fit for what my values are. There were a few instances this weekend where my values were definitely triggered. There's a lot of things about partying and drinking and drugs and all that stuff that just is not in alignment for me. And so I knew that to stay in alignment at that concert, for example, I wanted to make 10 people's day as I shared. I know that it is my responsibility and only my responsibility to protect my values and to live in alignment with them. But I think that if you don't know what they are and you're not clear on them, it's very easy to lose sight and then wonder why you feel down, you feel out of alignment, you feel depressed, why life isn't flowing and going good. This is one of the main practices that I do with my clients is, well, what do you value? Do you know what you value? Have you ever had the permission to ask yourself that question. I think a lot of us carry the values in which were passed on to us as children and we just think that that's how it has to be. And I think that this one can only come after we take intentional time for ourselves and get to know ourselves. And I have an episode somewhere in my, honestly, I might do another one about this, about realigning your values and getting to know your values because that is really where I like to start. There's something called Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs if you've ever heard of it and I decided I wanted to create my own a little bit different of how to heal in the bottom of the funnel is getting to know your values you will never live in alignment if you don't know what it is that sets your soul on fire what it is that makes you passionate what it is that aggravates you what it is that you know again lights that fire beneath you if you don't know those things it's so easy to just walk astray to be wandering and hoping that life will align, but life will not align until you intentionally decide what it is that is in alignment for you. Number four, identify any bleeders in your life, things not fulfilling you. This is another huge thing that I do with clients where we talk about feeders and bleeders in your life. We basically identify anything in your life that you invest time into. We like to identify usually 12 things. We write them all down and then we assess, okay, how much time are you investing into that versus what are you getting out of it? I remember I did this exercise three years ago and the amount of bleeders that came out trumped how many feeders I had by a long shot. And so it made so much sense why I was struggling so much in my life, why I wasn't happy why I turned so much outwards for validation because I didn't know how I wasn't recognizing for myself how much my circle and the things I was consuming with my time and energy were not in alignment for me. And again, in hindsight, because I hadn't identified in advance what was in alignment, I was just okay with anything. I used to be someone that would just match the energy of those around me, go with the flow, go with what they're saying. And I think now the reason that I feel so in alignment is because I think for myself. I think from my own head and my own heart and my own needs and my own desires. And yes, sometimes we need to accommodate those around us and we have to also, you know, match that not everybody's going to have the exact same values. And so there's a time and a place to overstep and understep. But if holistically in your life, you are not identifying and sticking with your values, you're going to surround yourself with things that are bleeding you without even realizing it. And so I would encourage you to assess for yourself 
Where is it that you are investing most of your time and energy and how much of it fills you up versus depletes you? Number five, prioritize your health and fitness. I woke up this morning and I felt like if somebody looked at me the wrong way, I would just cry. Even recording this episode is making me a little emotional for some reason. But I woke up just really, really, really low, really struggling. And my body was like, because I'll check in and I'll ask myself, what do I need? My body said, you need to disconnect for like an hour and you need to go move your body. And so I went for a beautiful walk and I came home and I had the most incredible strength training workout. And then I did a dance party around my apartment and I just instantly felt better. I know working out is not for everybody, but I promise you moving your body will make you feel better. We are energetic beings. And if that energy is just staying stagnant, staying in our body, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel it eventually. And I know that, I know that this is true because I've seen it time and time again. I used to have clients that would say, well, I'm not an athlete. I don't really go to the gym. I don't know how to work out. And all I'll say is just move your body. Find a way to just move your body. Go for a walk. Do some yoga. Do some stretching. Do whatever it takes but move your body. And sorry if that was super loud. I had to move my journal and my microphone. And prioritizing what it is you're consuming. Minimize alcohol. I'm sorry to be the one to say it. It is hurting your health. It is hurting your mental health in so many more ways than you realize. Drug use, exact same thing. Marijuana, whatever. It is affecting you. Minimize it as much as possible. Foods that have been societally identified as toxic foods, avoid them as much as possible. I know that it's hard, you guys, but it's, it's so normalized to drink and to eat bad foods that we don't think about how it's affecting us. But again, nobody is responsible for that but ourselves. Just because something is normal and everybody's doing it doesn't mean that it's what's best for us. If anything, in a lot of ways, it gives us permission to do it. It's like, okay, well, everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to do it. You don't have to go with what everybody else is doing. You're allowed to identify and stick to what is best for yourself. And knowing that those that validate you and appreciate you and understand you and respect you will respect your choices. But if you are not respecting your own choices for yourself and you know that what you're doing is hurting you, that's also going to affect your mental health and how you're showing up. And so for the love of God... Move your body, nourish your body every single day as best as possible. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun every now and again. I'm not saying you can't have junk food every now and again or have a drink or whatever. I do too, but it's definitely not every day. And I'm very intentional about how I feel before I do so. If I know I'm in a negative headspace, I'm not going to go drink. If I know I'm in a negative headspace, I'm not going to step further out of alignment. You have to assess this for yourself. And I know that this is hard to hear sometimes, but I want to be able to say the things that nobody is talking about, but we need to talk about. Okay, take a deep breath. (sighs) Today's episode is going to be a little bit longer, but that's okay. I'm here for it. We have a couple more. Number six, grounding, breath work, meditation. So self-explanatory, yet so forgotten, so neglected, and so vital for our health. By grounding, what I mean coming back to your body, checking in with yourself, noticing your breath work. We are so guilty of shallow breathing, which is just going to trigger our sympathetic nervous system, sending us into overdrive. And we stay in that state pretty much every single day without realizing it. Imagine the life that you could live if you intentionally focus on your breath work and knowing that how you breathe dictates how you live. How you breathe dictates how your nervous system is gearing itself up for how to prepare for you. And so if you are intentionally coming back to your body every now and then, checking in, your body is going to suit that. It's going to match that. Yet so many of us are walking around shallow breathing in that overdrive state, in that stress state, 
wondering why we feel so tired, why we feel so burnt out, why our digestion isn't working, why we have all these health issues. Now, I'm not saying breathing can cure us, but it can definitely play a big role in healing us and supporting us. So that is number six. Number seven, let yourself feel the discomfort. If you're struggling and you need to reset and you're at a hard place, let yourself feel that. Stop trying to cope. Stop trying to suppress it. Stop trying to ignore it. Stop pretending that you're strong and you're okay all the time. Sit in the discomfort and validate that you are a fucking human being that has needs. And when our body is communicating that and we neglect it, we are our own worst enemy. Imagine if the next time you felt low, you just stopped and said, thank you, body. Thank you for communicating that with me. I wonder what's going on. What am I needing? What am I not picking up? What am I not giving myself? What, where am I overcorrecting? Where am I undercorrecting? What's out of alignment? What's up? Our body does not give us signals just for fun. It is a system in a way, and it is built to let us know. If you worked in a factory and a machine kept like beeping and making loud noises and going off the walls, you're not going to be like, oh, it's fine. Just like keep hammering it. No, you're going to get a mechanic in there. You're going to tend to it. You're going to look at it. You're going to analyze it. You're going to see what's going on so you can figure it out to make sure it's up and running as efficient and best as possible. Yet, what do we do with ourselves? We're like, oh, I'll tend to it tomorrow. I'll tend to it later. Oh, let me just have another drink. Oh, let me just cope with it. Oh, let me do this. Why do we do this? You guys, and again, I'm so guilty of this too. We got to stop doing that. The reason you're needing a reset is probably because you've missed all the proactive cues that your body's been giving you. And now you're at a state where your body's like, okay, enough's enough. If you're not going to listen, I'm going to shut down the machine. I'm going to make you sick. I'm going to make you tired until you, you are forced in a way to pay attention. If we began to listen to those proactive cues that our body gives us and intentionally checked in every single day, it wouldn't start to be so heavy. I encourage you to sit in the discomfort and ask yourself what you might be needing. Okay, number eight, set intentions, set direction, setting goals. It is so easy to just wander and go day to day, directionless, and then we feel that. We, our, our brain loves structure. It loves routine. It loves knowing what's to come next. Because when we don't have a routine, our mind is always on edge. Our amygdala is like, all right, cool. What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? But once we've identified those routines and it becomes second nature, our brain gets to take a break in a way. Think of how much it's overthinking all the time when we don't have structure because it just constantly doesn't know what's to come next. Structure is, again, when I was talking about my version of hierarchy of needs, it's getting to know your values. And then we talk a lot about where are you headed? What direction are you going? Do you even know that? Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you supposed to know how to get there? Are you just hoping to stumble upon happiness, stumble upon your desires? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. So I always say, focus on just the next 90 days. No more than that. Yes, I am a long-term strategic thinker and I'm thinking, you know, years in advance backwards for certain things. But I know that the only way to get there is through 90-day intentions and habits that follow suit with that. And so if you don't have any goals identified for yourself, again, I encourage you to listen to Tuesday's episode of 10 Reasons Why 80% of People Don't Hit Their Goals and see if maybe one of those is in alignment for you and how you can shift. But I encourage you to set some intentions and some directions for your life, even if it's starting with three habits every single day, making your bed, brushing your teeth, getting something to eat, doing that every single day for 90 days and just notice how it feels. Try to have some structure in your life. Also just calms down our nervous system. Again, because it's not constantly on edge of what is to come next. Number nine. We've got two left, you guys. Number nine. And this one's weird. This one's weird if you've never done it. We've all looked in the mirror. We've all looked in the mirror. But have you looked in the mirror with intention of connecting with yourself? 
oh my God, this is my favorite thing to do. And when I decided a couple years ago, I wanted to be an author one day and I want to write a book. This is my first time actually saying this ever on the podcast, which is kind of interesting. I've only told, I think, two people in my life that I want to be an author. I've actually been writing behind the scenes. I wanted it to be called Girl Look in the Mirror because a large part of my story of how I began to focus on self-love was I looked in the mirror in the morning and I tried to tell myself something kind. Further than that, what had happened is I asked my friend, I had the, the most beautiful friend when I was living in Alberta. I'm going to keep it anonymous, but she knows who she is. And I asked her one day, I said, how are you so positive all the time? And just, this is when I was in a really, really dark spot. I said, how are you just such good energy all the time? Like, what are you doing? What am I not doing that you're doing? And she said, well, I look in the mirror every single day and I tell myself something I love about myself. And some days are harder than others, but I don't leave the mirror until I say something kind. And I'm like, oh my God, I can do that. Let me try it. Next morning, walked into the bathroom, looked in the mirror, nothing. I'm like, nope. (laughs) I couldn't think of anything. And I remember doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it started very surface level, right? Like, okay, your shirt looks nice today. Okay, you're having a good hair day. But it was never really deep for a long time. But over time, it started to get better and it started to get easier. And in fact, this is so important and beneficial that it is a part of one of the habits that I track, which is self-love in the mirror in the morning. I track if I do that. I have not missed doing that in over two years. It is just a part of my routine now. My brain is just wired in that way that when I look in the mirror in the morning, I tell myself something nice. And some days, trust me, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. When I'm disconnected from myself, I have nothing to say. And so sometimes I recycle what I tell myself and that's okay. But I really, really try to tell myself something that I want to make sure I'm radiating to other people. Not just, girl, you look good today, but like, you are such a kind human. You are making a difference. Keep going. You've got this. Connect with yourself and look at yourself in the mirror. It is a powerful practice. Again, it's weird. It can feel icky in the beginning. But I've been doing it for two years now and it has honestly changed my life and the fact that I wanted to name my book that still might one day about deepening our relationship with ourself and self-love I encourage you to look in the mirror and connect with yourself and actually connect with yourself look yourself in the damn eyes and tell yourself something you like about yourself it's gonna feel weird I encourage you to try it and see how it feels last but not least validate your emotions and know that it's okay If you're in a rut, if you're struggling, if you just need that reset, that permission to just shift, whatever, validate that that is okay. Validate the fact that if you are even listening to this and you're still here listening to this 40 minutes in, that is incredible. That is incredible. And I want you to validate that for yourself because most people wouldn't. Most people do not take the time to connect with self, to want to improve self, to want to look within because we're protecting. If anything, when I look at society, I just view pain, protection, and the need to suppress. And I know that that all comes from experiences and I know that that comes from pain and I get it. But I also know that again, as I've shared multiple times today, we are the only ones responsible and able to change the trajectory of our life. That falls in your lap when you can take action to do that. And so you need to start by validating that for yourself and knowing that it is okay, but it is your responsibility to shift it. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Today's episode is a little bit longer than usual, but I want you to just know that you're not alone in going through this. If you need support, I encourage you to reach out. I would love to hop on a call with you, but I encourage you to maybe take some time after today's episode and just reflect what this might've brought up for you. This is some of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to talk about. And again, I wanted to come at this from a headspace of where I'm at right now of letting you guys know that I'm right there with you. I struggle too. I'm struggling right now. I am very happy. I'm very aligned. I'm very fulfilled. I am proud of myself for getting here. But like I said, mental illness is going to affect me probably for the rest of my life. And I'm okay with that. I know that that's a part of me. 
but I also know that that's my responsibility to make sure that I'm doing the things, investing my time, investing my energy into persons, places, things, and ideas that are in alignment and that make me feel the best version of me. How can you begin to look at those things for you and make sure that they support you in being the best version of you? So thank you guys so, so much as always. All, all the love. And I am so excited and grateful to chat with you all next week. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.